Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Highlander News. Broadcasting live from the Highlands News Studio in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. I'm Crane Carnahan. And I'm Alex Sprecher. President Barack Obama is asking Congress for $1.8 billion to help get ready to fight the Zika virus, which is spreading across the Americas fast, and doctors fear it may cause severe birth defects. I got a chance to find out more on the subject and why it has become so prevalent. Dallas County now has two cases of Zika virus. The first known case of Zika virus spreading through sexual contact in the U.S. was reported in Texas on Monday, one day after the World Health Organization called Zika a public health emergency. The case in Dallas County also marks the first local transmission of Zika, meaning it's the first time someone contracted the virus in the U.S., not while traveling abroad. According to the Center for Disease Control, the person was infected with Zika after having sexual contact with someone who had returned from a country where the disease is present. Dallas County health officials said the country was Venezuela. There has been no reports of the disease spreading by mosquito in Dallas County thus far. In May 2015, the Pan American Health Organization, also known as PAHO, issued an alert regarding the first confirmed Zika virus infection in Brazil. The outbreak in Brazil led to reports of Gaulle and Barr syndrome and pregnant women giving birth to babies with birth defects and poor pregnancy outcomes. The symptoms of Zika are fever, rash, joint pain, or conjunctivitis. One in five people are infected with Zika. Zika is rarely fatal and only lasts in the body about a week. This virus is particularly dangerous in pregnant women. The Zika virus has been linked to microfolly in which babies are born with abnormally small heads and undeveloped brains. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports 50 cases among U.S. travelers from December 2015 to February 5, 2016. However, there are no reports in Kentucky or Ohio. Congratulations to the Highlands High School Chamber Orchestra who have been selected to perform at the Kentucky School Board Association's 80th annual conference on February 26th at the Gold House in Louisville, Kentucky. Good luck to the 26 students involved and what an excellent way to represent Highlands High School. Another congratulations to this year's We the People team for winning state and advancing to nationals in April, which will take place in Washington, D.C. Now, Trey, I've heard that the bowling teams have done phenomenal this season. Tell me a bit more. Well, you know, they each went undefeated during the regular season. They each won regionals and they each made the state. We wish the teams best of luck this weekend. The girls basketball team currently holds a record of 16 and 9. Brianna Adler is leading the girls, averaging 11.4 points per game. The ladies take on Beachwood tonight at 7:30. Good luck, ladies, and beat Tigers. The boys basketball team is 5 and 13. Mitchell Kane is now leading the team, scoring 13.3 points per game. Hopefully, the birds can pick up a win tonight at home against Lloyd. Good luck, guys. The swimming and diving teams have had great seasons so far. They have regionals today and finals tomorrow. They're looking to win their fifth straight region title this weekend. Good luck, boys and girls, and bring home the gold. The HHS varsity dance team came in first in palm and hip-hop at regionals. They also were the top scoring team, earning the title grand champions at the competition. We wish the team good luck at Jam Fest this weekend. As many of you know, we have recently renovated our gymnasium. We have more. Oh, the new gym is fantastic. It's, you know, everything that we wanted in the gym. You know, we finally have air conditioning. We have great bleachers. You know, the lobby is fantastic. It's so much nicer to have all concession stands up here in the lobby. And, you know, it's so much bigger and, you know, it's great. The video board's unbelievable. Um, the locker room's downstairs. I mean, it's top, it's one of the top ones in the region now. It may not be the biggest, but it's one of the nicest now. It's much more uh, fan friendly with access to the stands and uh, our guys seem to like shooting in it so that's probably the most important part of it is it's, it's a much better uh, shooting background so uh, hopefully translates a few more makes a few more wins. I think the new gym is absolutely amazing. Um, you know when we first op opened it up people were coming in and, and the first word coming out of their mouth was wow. I mean it really does not look like the same place. Uh, the, the improvements in, in this gym make it, make it definitely one of the, the nicest gyms um, in the state, in the region for sure. 
Uh, it is absolutely first class. With your Winter Sports Recap, I'm Trey Bowden. Corinne? Thanks, Trey. Best of luck to all winter sports at State, which will be happening within the next few weeks. A new local attraction at the Cincinnati Museum Center has taken a childhood favorite and created art with it, putting an interesting twist on something so familiar. Josh? So for us, it really captured us because it is all about unleashing your creativity, to explore your imagination, to see what's inside you and what you can create out of Lego bricks, popsicle sticks, computer code, all these things that you have rattling around in your mind to really explore that and to know that there's really no rules to creativity and to creating your own thing. So we want people to come through this exhibit and to be inspired to you know, find their own meaning, find their own inspiration to do something that is really unique to them. At the Museum Center, we look around, we look for uh, different exhibits, some that are history-based, some that are science-based, some that are more interactive and tactile. This one we were particularly interested in because it, uh, it took something that everyone's very familiar with and uh, Lego bricks and it did something unique and remarkable with them and that is to recreate and also to create from scratch original works of art. Nathan Sawaya, he's always been an artist uh, since, he, since a young age, so he's done drawing, painting, all these things, sculptures. He went to, the, went to high school, college, uh, law school, and at night, instead of going to the gym, reading, watching movies, or something like that, he played with Lego bricks and made sculptures out of them. like this before and it's just too incredible to miss. Some of you are going to see it, you're going to tell your friends, that friend's going to be bummed out because they're going to wait, wait around and they're going to miss it. Uh, it's just really, really incredible. You've never seen a T-Rex skeleton made out of Lego bricks. You've never seen the flying pig made out of Lego bricks, clouds made out of Lego bricks. It's really incredible to see it on this scale and to just see how many different things he's able to create out of this. Well, that's it for this adventure. Be sure to check out the Art of the Brick exhibit at the Cincinnati Museum Center now through May 1st. Make sure all who are fans of Legos make some time to go out and see this local event at the Cincinnati Museum Center. A final congratulations to Grayson Pendry and Isabel Eisen, who represented Highlands at West Point Leadership and Ethics Seminar last weekend. That's all for this edition of the Highlander News. I'm Crane Carnahan. And I'm Alex Sprecher. Have an excellent President's Day weekend, Highlands.